In less than two weeks, a total solar eclipse will blot out the sun over a swath over and across North America. Yeah, some are calling it the Great North American Eclipse. But how much of it will we see here in Northeast Wisconsin, and how far do you have to go to see the whole thing? Fox 11 meteorologist Phil Castro has more. On Monday, April 8th, a total solar eclipse will sweep across North America. The path of totality will span from Mexico and out to the Canadian Maritimes, sweeping through the U.S. in the meantime. Here in Green Bay, we will not see totality. About 87% of the sun will be covered. And while that sounds like it's pretty close to the full thing, Barlow Planetarium Director Dr. Terry Gee has seen an eclipse at totality, and she says there's a big difference. It's completely different. Okay. Once the sun is completely covered, and it's only in about a 70 to 100 mile wide path, yeah. once it's covered, it's like darkness, but you can look and see daylight on either side. Really? Yeah, it's weird. If you do want to try to check out totality, the path comes fairly close to Northeast Wisconsin, as long as you're okay with a road trip. Here's a look at the path of totality. As mentioned, it starts down on the Pacific coast of Mexico, starts to cross into the United States at around 1.30 central time. It then progresses to the northeast from there across the rest of Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, uh, Arkansas, and Missouri. And then it starts to enter Illinois and it approaches its closest point to northeast Wisconsin. If you're trying to head to east central Illinois, south of Champaign, it's going to take six to seven hours of driving from Green Bay just to get to the edge of the path of totality. Now, for West Central and Central Indiana, Indianapolis, that's a bit closer, the edge of totality there, more like a five to six hour drive from Green Bay. And if you do head out past Fort Wayne in Eastern Indiana, that will once again be about a six or seven hour drive from Green Bay. Now, totality will be occurring here uh, around just after two o'clock our time or three o'clock Eastern time. Now, from there, the eclipse continues on up toward Maine and then eventually out across the Canadian Maritimes. So if you're staying local rather than going elsewhere to get into the path of totality, the moon starts to move in front of the sun shortly before one o'clock in the afternoon on April 8th. We reach our maximum extent of about 87% coverage at 2.09 p.m. And then the moon exits fully the disk of the sun at 3.21 p.m. Meteorologist Phil DeCastro, Fox 11 News. So, uh, you know, we've got something very exciting coming up in just about, uh, about what, about a week and a half here now. Yeah. Or almost two weeks, I would say, a little closer yeah. to that. Um, the, uh, we have a solar eclipse coming. So tell me a little bit about what people can expect here in northeast Wisconsin. All right. So the path of totality is running south of us, mm -hmm. and that's where the sun will be completely covered. So here in Wisconsin, here in the Fox Cities area, we'll get about 85% of the sun covered. And so what will happen is starting at about one o'clock, um, the moon will start to pass in front of the sun and it will get closer and closer until it's covering up about 85% of the sun. So what it will look like if you're looking at the sun is it will look like the sun is a crescent moon honestly, is what it will look like. Now, of course, you can't look at the sun safely <laughs> without protection. You can do that in a few different ways. Um, one is the easiest way, we sell eclipse glasses here, uh, and you just put them on and you can look at the sun. Um, if you don't want to purchase glasses, then what you'll need to do is either get a colander out and line it up with the sun and you can project the image, lots of images of the sun yeah. down onto the ground. And to be clear, you're not looking through the colander. No, you are not looking through the colander. You're like looking at the shadow. Right? Yes. Okay. And you can also make your own pinhole camera. Same principle, you're just gonna take a piece of cardboard, poke a hole through it, have a piece of, another piece of cardboard or a piece of thick paper. And again, you're gonna line it up and cast the shadow onto the paper. So those are really cheap ways of doing it. But if you want to actually look at the sun, you will need to have glasses. Gotcha. I've heard a welder's glass or a welder's mask. There is, somewhere. it's a, a you have to be careful. You have to be careful because it's only a certain thickness. And I honestly, I can't remember That's what the thickness is because it's much more difficult to get it than you used to oh. be able to. So yes, welder's glass, but it has to be the right thickness for it. And I, I would just be hesitant to recommend sure. it. And I can look that up and put it yeah. in the story too. So, okay. so I, I, and I'll even say like, yes, welder's glass, 
But, and then I'll, I'll look at yeah. the stats on that. So we're going to see 85% of this coverage. That is, I think it was back in 2017. Mm -hmm. We had one around here as yes. well. How does this compare to that last one? Um, now, I wasn't here. Right. right. <laughs> I was in Idaho. But uh, it, it, it will be comparable. <laughs> I believe uh, the path of totality was, it was going the opposite direction, but it crossed like an X. Right. And so it will actually be fairly similar. It will be enough that the light will start getting dimmer. Okay. Um, it won't get dark like it will with the total, but it will actually get dimmer. Mm -hmm. And you might, it being spring, you may not notice a temperature change. Right. You could, but I'm not sure you will. Um, depends on what the temperature is that day. But you might actually start to see animals react to it getting dimmer because it will be like it's going sunset. Mm -hmm. And so some animals will actually start to react as if it's time for bed. Okay. Um, but you, if you looked at the sun without eclipse glasses, which you shouldn't do, but if you did, <laughs> you would not be able to tell the sun was being covered. Okay. It will, it will just be giving off less light. Which is still certainly enough to hurt. Yes, yes. That's why, so some people are in the impression that it's more dangerous to look at the sun during an eclipse. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's just as dangerous as it was, as it would be any other time. It's, the problem is, is that during an eclipse, people want to look at you're, the sun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so people will tend to go, ooh, what, can I see it yet? And they'll even squint a little bit trying to see. And that's the, where the problem comes, is that you're basically staring right at it. Your eyes are very sensitive. You can basically sunburn your eyes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> trying to stare at the sun. And sunglasses are not good enough. <laughs> so when it comes to uh, this totality, this is our last shot at seeing a total solar eclipse for a little while, right? Yeah, so the next one that will pass over the United States pretty much at all is in, I believe, 2045. The next one to pass over Wisconsin is in 2099. I don't know if we're going to be around for that one. I'll be 118. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the one that's in 2045 is going to be further south. Okay. So it'll be harder to get to it. We'll have less of the eclipse up here. Uh, is the Barlow going to be doing anything for the eclipse this year? We will be streaming. Uh, we'll be showing this, the NASA live stream. Okay. So if you want to be able to see what the totality will look like and you can't get there yourself, NASA mm -hmm. does a live stream of the entire event. Mm -hmm. So we'll just have the doors open. People can come in and look as they like. Um, unfortunate, well, fortunately for me, <laughs> I'm going to the path of totality. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, and so is Ty, my coworker. So we, there won't be anyone to run any events, okay. but we will have opportunities for people to come. <clears throat> if they want to buy eclipse glasses, they can. Um, we're going to have a couple of astronomy students from UWO Oshkut from the main campus. They'll be here and they can answer questions if people have them. But basically our only thing is that we'll have it open for people to come and watch the live stream and see totality if they would like to see it. What are some of the most common, <coughs> would you say, misconceptions or questions that you get about the eclipse? I remember you said one of them misconception is that it's more dangerous mm -hmm. to look. Anything else that you hear about? Um, <coughs> I guess... How the I, 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 it's hard to say the the difference between even ninety nine percent and actual totality uh -huh. people don't really understand it. Have, were you able to see the twenty seventeen here, but not okay? So not totality totality is completely different from even ninety nine percent. Okay, um, and so what people assume that it's well, yeah, that's cool, but it's not going to be any different if I'm actually in the path of totality. Uh -huh. It's completely different. Okay. Once the sun is completely covered, and it's only in about a 70 to 100 mile wide path, yeah. once it's covered, it's like darkness, but you can look and see daylight on either side. Really? Yeah. It's weird. Huh. It's, it's a really weird experience. Um, and, and you can actually see stars. Now, really? only really bright ones. You're not going to be able to see like a full star field. Sure, sure, sure. But the longer totality lasts, the darker it, get, it gets. Because what's happening is as this, the moon moves in front of the sun, when it's a longer, pa a longer eclipse, that means that the moon is, is more thoroughly covering the sun. So there's less of the sunlight that can leak around the edges. Gotcha. So um, it actually ends up being 
this is um, longer than the 2017, so it's going to be about four minutes okay. of totality. And that's another thing a lot of people don't understand is how brief that period is when the sun is fully covered. It's four minutes. This time it was two minutes uh -huh. um, in 2017. The one in 2045 that will be further south will actually be six minutes. And that's a really long time for totality. Yeah. But the entire time of the eclipse is actually going to be about two hours. Okay. So here it will hit, it will start about one o'clock where the moon will start to cover the sun. It will reach its maximum um, around two, I think it's like 208, mm -hmm. something like that. And that will be when it's about 85% covered. Mm -hmm. And then it will finally move away from the sun completely, the moon will, um, around three, like 315, something like that. So altogether, it's going to be just over two hours. And that's another thing. It's like you have a very long period of time, but the maximum lasts for a very short period of time. So you watch for, I mean, if you're really into it, you'll be like me and just standing out there the whole <laughs> time wanting sure. to see everything. Yeah, yeah. But if you're wanting to see the maximum, you go to the maximum time. It's about four minutes. You can watch that whole period. And, and you really won't notice dramatically a difference between the maximum and just after and before max. You're just, it'll just start to gradually get brighter and brighter. And it happens right. very, very slowly. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there are too many questions <laughs> left to ask. Um, any general tips? I mean, do you think it's too late? For people to hit the road to try to get down there? Because I think the closest spots are about a six hour drive, yeah, yeah. roughly. Indiana, southern Illinois. Okay. Um, if you want to go and stay, unless you know someone down there, it's yeah. probably too late. Uh, we had someone come here and he said that it he had found hotel rooms for $700 a night. <laughs> yeah. I got mine last year. Right. Oh, I bet. I bet. Um, if you're wanting to just drive down and back. That's going to be iffy too. The traffic's going to be insane going down to totality. I mean, remember, we have Chicago between us and the path of sure, totality. Sure, yeah. And a lot of people in Chicago are going to go down. Yep. So what I would recommend if you want to go to the path of totality, which I recommend if you can, is go down the day before. Maybe don't go all the way to the path and see if you can find a hotel somewhere around or maybe a campground or something that you yeah. can go and stay in overnight and then just drive to the path of totality, take back roads <laughs> and then then go back and don't unless you're really not minding maybe a ten hour drive sure, to sure. go what would normally take six, then just wait till the next day. Because everything okay. should be mostly cleared out by the next day. Gotcha. That's that's what happened in Idaho because I was actually in the path of totality when I lived in Idaho in oh, twenty seventeen. Okay. And uh, we ha I had relatives coming up from Utah. It took them, what normally took them three hours, took them six. Okay. <laughs> and Idaho's not as densely populated. No, no one here. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. so I'm anticipating there's going to be tons of traffic on the road. Okay. But you don't need to be anywhere special to see it. That's the one thing. I mean, the path sure. of totality is very yeah. rigid, but you could be anywhere within the path yeah. of totality. You don't need special equipment except for a glasses if you want to look right at it's it. It's going to go right over Indianapolis, I think. Yes, right? it is. But you don't have to be in Indianapolis. No. You could be in the middle of a farm field in, in Indiana. You could pull off on the side of the road yeah. and you would be able to watch it just the same as anyone else. Gotcha. So that's the main thing is you don't need any special equipment beyond eclipse glasses. Yeah. Um, and during totality, you don't need to be wearing the eclipse glasses. In fact, you won't see anything if you keep them on during totality. Oh, okay. <laughs> because, and that's when you can see the corona of the sure, sun. Sure, sure. Um, and... It, and so that's that's the only time that it's safe to just look directly at the sun is when it's actually completely covered. Because there's enough. Because the sun is completely covered. You're yeah, only yeah, getting yeah. just the kind of the reflected light from the corona, and that's it. Gotcha. So it's safe to look then, but as soon as the moon starts moving away, then you need to put the glasses back gotcha. on. And you'll be able to tell. Everything. Oh, yeah. So. And it's not like it's going to, like, blind you or something. It's yeah, not like yeah, a yeah. laser pointer in your eye or anything. But you'll just, like, as soon as you start seeing the actual disk of the sun, glasses back on. It'll be very empty. Oh, yeah. You won't be able to see that the sun's covered anymore. I mean, it'll be dim still, but the lot, even a tiny sliver of the sun will give off yeah. so much light, you won't be able to see that it's covered. That's what was, that was what surprised me the most in 2017. For sure. Was that I couldn't actually see the sun was covered. That's 
that's why people in ancient times were so afraid of it. Sure. Because they couldn't see that the sun was being covered. Yeah, they just yeah, saw the sun's yeah. light the sun dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And it, then it was gone completely, and then it was back again. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, it's no wonder they were terrified by it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could only imagine as well, you know, yeah. any natural phenomenon like that. Yeah, you know, and if you don't... tornadoes, yeah. Yeah, and I think if they had been able to actually see that it was covered, mm -hmm. being covered by something, they might have said, okay, then it's going to come back again because mm -hmm. something's obviously moving. Yeah, yeah. But when they couldn't see that, all they could see was the light dying. Right. And that would be frightening. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Anything else that you'd like to add? Or? Um, well, we are doing a show right now that's on eclipses okay. here at the Barlow okay. on Fridays and Saturdays at 4 p.m. It's called Eclipse the Sun Revealed, and it will talk about some of the history, some of the experiences people had with solar eclipses. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, we are selling eclipse glasses if you want to uh, sure. do that and have the, the easy way to look at the sun. How much are those? <laughs> They're $4 a pair right. if you buy... A package of six will give you six for twenty, or twelve for forty. Oh, what a bargain! Yeah. I mean that, and I mean that. Yeah, thing. <laughs> I, yeah, that's nice. It's good to know. Yeah, so that, and we're selling those all the way through. So if anyone wants to come anytime, we're they can come to the box office and buy them. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yeah.